Hello, and welcome to this little video on Gopher. If you look at the internet today, a lot of people would say that it's sort of defined by the web. The web is just everyone's favourite way to use the internet. But if you go back in time to 1991 when the web was released, you'll find it didn't actually happen in a vacuum. There was another hypertext protocol called Gopher, and that actually competed with the web in the early days. So what happened to Gopher? Well, it's actually still around, and you can still use it, but it's not so popular anymore. Why not? Well, let's take a look and find out. Probably the main reason is because it looks like this. It looks kind of primitive, doesn't it? Well, there's actually a good reason for that. Gopher was designed around a different set of design goals compared to the web. On the web, the, one of the goals was to, to allow for content to be expressed richly. There's nothing rich about the content that you find on Gopher. It's all just plain text and looks pretty much all like this. But on the other hand, one of the problems with the early web was that internet connections in the early 90s were quite slow and a lot of hardware that was available was also, um, well, also fairly low end compared to today. A lot of people only had access to text-only terminals, for example. So Gopher was actually designed to run pretty efficiently on that kind of hardware. Anyway, this is called a menu, and at first glance you mightn't think that this looks anything like a web page, but there are some similarities. For example, just like each web page on the web has a URL, each menu or other piece of content on Gopher also has its own URL, and it doesn't look that much different to a, a web address that you'll, you'd find on the web. Now. You also have links, so you'll notice that some of these lines have line numbers next to them. So this is line number 18, and it's got a label. These are our links, and they let us go deeper into the site. So let's say uh, I want to go here, get, getting started with Gopher, I'll follow this link. And here I am. On another menu. If I want to retrace my steps, well, if it were the web, I'd have a back button. On Gopher, you don't go back, but you do go up. So I'll just go up back to where I was before. Okay, so what about images? Well, given everything's really plain text and primitive and a lot of terminals in 1991 weren't really capable of opening images, it may surprise you to learn that Gopher does the Gopher protocol does actually support the notion of an image. You can encode GIFs or basically anything else, any other kind of file which wasn't around at the time. So if I go to line number 66, I seem to remember there was a series of links that would take me to an image there. Okay, I'll just go down here. And here we go. Okay, somewhere around here, there should be an image. Unfortunately, my Gopher client doesn't support it. Let's try a different Gopher client. Okay, here we have a different program which can also be used for Gopher sites. And this one does display the the image is a link, and it says that it's got an unknown type, presumably because PNG files just weren't around in the early 90s. And if I open this, how will it be displayed? Okay, it's been opened in a separate window. And if once I close this window, I'm returned back to where I was. Okay, I also have another browser-based Gopher client, which looks like this. In this one, you can expand the image links so you can actually view the images in line with the page.
But note, crucially, that the images don't appear by default. Now, in the early 90s, if you were browsing the web, it would take a long time for the images to load, so this is almost certainly very deliberate. And I guess in this day and age where the web is just sort of overcluttered with um, advertisements and all kinds of things which don't really add to the content that much, this is kind of refreshing in a way. You just view the things you want to view when you want to view them. Now I'm going to show you a key limitation of Gopher. Let's go to Wikipedia. Okay. Let's say I want to search for an article. Um, fairly predictable. Okay. Here we go. Here's our article. Now, before we saw some menus in Gopher, but not everything's a menu. This article is just a, basically a plain text file. And that's the other main kind of content you find on Gopher. You have menus and you have plain text. Now, I searched for Gopher protocol, so my search terms are highlighted everywhere. But there's something missing. So, in case you haven't noticed, this is just an article which has been mirrored from Wikipedia. If this were the real Wikipedia, I'd have links all the way through this article to take me to other articles. For example, these references might take me to different web pages. Or, if I were to go right to the end of the article, there might be a see also section where I could click on some links. Text content in Gopher can't contain any links of any kind. The only thing you can do from here is go back up to where you came from. So essentially anything that's not a menu is a dead end. Well, clearly this is a disadvantage compared to the web, but it has to do with the way menus are written. On the web, you have to you have to learn a, a sort of a, almost a programming language to make a web page called HTML, and every web page is written in HTML. Every web page is formatted using markup tags and whatnot. On Gopher, it's actually a lot easier to write content. If you want to write a menu, for example, it's just a plain text file where each line in your text file has a prefix, like a special character at the start, like number one or um, a letter of the alphabet, which says what that line is used for. So on this menu, we have several lines here which are just purely for information. These lines are here, are basically informational lines, and their purpose is to show this banner, which you can sort of make out if you squint. And here we have lines which point to content. And it's actually dead simple to put together a Gopher menu compared to putting together a web page for that reason. But if you have a whole article, you're not going to format each line into a special information line in a menu. So, therefore, you can't take advantage of things like hyperlinks. So, there's just one last thing I want to show you, and that's the Gopher equivalent of Google. Looking at, back at this site that I was looking at before, they actually host on this site a search engine called Veronica 2. Now, Gopher is in many ways a bit like a time capsule of some of the ideas and attitudes people had at the time um, in the early 90s when Gopher was a lot more popular. And you can see that they were kind of a bit less mature and perhaps a bit less realistic and a bit more naive about issues like usability and privacy and security. For example, here's the search engine, and you can go ahead and search for whatever you want to search for. But they also tell you that before you search for anything, you should 
read an entire instruction manual before you begin. I guess in this day and age, um, web designers are a lot more realistic about the lengths people will go to to use their websites. So they certainly wouldn't tell you to do that. And another thing that the person in charge of this particular Gopher site has done is they've made some information available to the public, such as uh, about the site itself, such as the current temperature of the server. So currently the server is, well, it's in Fahrenheit, so it doesn't matter. And also the end of the server log. Now, in the early 90s, this might have been exciting. You can see everything that's going on um, on the server. You can see who's using what web page, sorry, what um, parts of the Gopher site. Um, in this day and age, with all the privacy concerns people have, this is not what you'd call responsible. And why? Because this Gopher site hosts a search engine. Like we mentioned, Veronica 2, up here. Anything that anyone searches for here, along with the information needed to make a connection, like their IP address and their internet provider's host name, is going to get added to the server log. And once it's on the server log, any member of the public can view it right here. So, by all means, feel free to search, uh, search for content on Gopher, but just be mindful of the fact that if you use this particular search engine, anything you search for, along with information that identifies you, will be broadcast to the public. Just because... Um, in Gopher's heyday, people were more naive about things like security, and the internet was a much smaller place where everyone was friends. And they haven't updated it to reflect modern times. So anyway, that's Gopher. What do you think? Do you think it has a place in today's internet? Feel free to leave a comment below, and thanks for watching.